So uh, I was working, uh, you know, in financial services and I was working uh, also in insurance for workers' compensation uh, for a firm, you know, dealing with worker, workers' compensation claims. And I stumbled across, I had been following kind of AI research and around that time was when, uh, you know, Jeffrey Hinton's group uh, started um, publishing on some improvements they had using uh, deep neural networks. And, um, and so I think that kind of kicked off my fascination with AI and led me to uh, take a data science uh, uh, certificate training through the University of Washington and then um, uh, my follow up with my master's at Georgia Tech and, and also my PhD work through the University of Leiden. Um, and one of the, the things that I realized was that there, you know, we have a, we're kind of in this point in time where we have a proliferation of data in the form of sensors um, and systems that can capture large amounts of data. And then at the same point, we have these AI algorithms, which are uh, getting better and better every year. And so to me, uh, it seemed like the time and the opportunity were ripe to really make that my focus in regards to my career and empowering uh, groups, entities, organizations uh, with AI to you know, positively impact humankind, essentially. And um, so that's, that's, that kind of led into my job at Volkswagen. Um, while I've been at Volkswagen, I've kind of worked a lot on uh, different data science and AI projects along the value chain. Um, and, uh, you know, and also, I've also worked, uh, you know, as a founding member of the quantum computing team. So I've, we could talk about that a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think it, through the course of my career, my mission is generally to use AI and data science for good to build products that improve people's lives. And so that's, uh, that was kind of what led me to get into it. And that's kind of the driving impetus behind my career at the moment. Yeah, I'll definitely prepare, you know, around some of those data privacy uh, and ethic, ethical AI topics, as well as, you know, um, specifically talking about the autonomous driving space. Um, you know, other areas that I think are, are, are a real opportunity is kind of in the logistics, you know, smart cities, um, you know, smart factory space um, yeah. as well. And, uh, you know, there's, I might be able to talk a little bit about that. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, the big question of how close are we to what they call artificial general intelligence, you know, where you have, uh, you know, AI that is human level, essentially. Mm -hmm. And uh, is the behavior that we're seeing from uh, the, the uh, Lambda, the Google AI, is that sentient behavior is it not or, or, or what does that tell us about you know our ways of measuring uh sentience right we have the turing test but what are what are some other ways we don't really we don't at this point i don't know if we can really measure uh sentience effectively right so um you know it's it's a real interesting question but i'd be i'd be glad to dive into also the history of the um history of AI, you know, what's kind of led, led up to the boom, uh, where we're kind of at now, you know, with, uh, you know, being able to pro data processing systems in, in the form of distributed computing, and then also paralyzed, you know, uh, paralyzed uh, processors, such as GPUs, that mm -hmm. allowed, allowed us to train machine learning, uh, AI and machine learning algorithms uh, much, uh, much more, on much more data in uh, much smaller time frames. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's still, you know, I focus a lot on what I call narrow AI, which is, you know, very, you have an algorithm that's trained on a specific set of data for a specific task. 
Um, and that's what I think a lot of our, you know, applications are at today. Um, and historically, uh, yeah, it's pretty much about pattern recognition. And, you know, once you have this ability to automatically detect patterns in data, what do you, what do, you do with it, right? And so um, we, we definitely have that. And to me, the big, the big risk today is people using those narrow AIs in ways that might not be um, helpful to humanity and may in fact be harmful. And I, I actually think that's more of a danger uh, potentially than um, you know an, art, an, an artificial general, you know, a sentient AI taking over our, you know, a Skynet type situation. Right. Um, so I'd be glad to talk about that and you know go into more detail about that. But yeah, all topics that I'm really passionate about and you know stuff that I think about and, and deal with every day as, as part of my job. Yeah, I would say it would be G the two things that kind of brought AI out of the AI winter or, um, you know, were uh, hardware, you know, GPUs, uh, right. graphic processing units, and then also uh, cell phones, right? Like we have devices now that have that run AI algorithms that can do uh, very sophisticated, you know, image recognition and, and natural language understanding and processing and stuff. And I think that, and at the same time, cloud-based data, big data processing systems. So you take those three things, you put them together with AI algorithms and you kind of have the state of where we're at. I mean, that's a very simplified view, but. Um,